language, but this is still going to be an essential introduction into many common aspects of the Arabic language. Standard Arabic alphabet has 28 letters. All Arabic based scripts start from right to left. Many letters of the Arabic alphabet have an English equivalent sound, but there are also a few letters that don't have an equivalent sound in English. For example, H. This sound is more guttural H sound. H. Hayat. Kh. Khafif. S. This sound is similar to S but with the throat constricted. S. S. Safha. Sabr. D. This sound is similar to English D but with the throat constricted. Daw. This sound is similar to T but with the throat constricted. Tabib. There is no equivalent sound in English for this letter. The. Zahara. Uh. This voice is similar to English H but more guttural. Uh. Ain. Gh. Ghurfa. This letter is similar to English K, but it's pronounced further back in the mouse. Q. Qalam. Arabic diacritics or tashkil. The literal meaning of tashkil is forming. As a normal Arabic text does not provide enough information about the correct pronunciation, the main purpose of tashkil is to provide a phonetic guide for a phonetic aid for example, to show the correct pronunciation. It serves the same purpose as furigana in Japanese or pinyin or juin in Mandarin Chinese for children who are learning to read or foreign learners. Some Arabic textbooks for foreigners now use harakat as a phonetic guide to make learning reading Arabic easier. We will talk about some of the most common ones here. Just remember, diacritics cannot be used without a letter and they have to come with a letter. Fatha. It adds an a sound to the letter it is added to. For example, b, b. Kasra. It adds an e sound to the letter it's added to. For example, b, b. Zamma. It adds a u sound to the letter. For example, b, bu. The fatha, kasra, and dhamma, when they are double, they're called tanween. For example, ben. Bin bun. Shadda doubles the letter. For example, b b. Indefinite article. Nouns in Arabic by default are in indefinite state, and when a noun is in indefinite, it has a tanween attached to the end of it. For example, kitabun, waladun, najmun. Babun. Proper nouns also have a tanween at the end, but does not mean it's indefinite, since it won't make any sense for a noun to have an indefinite state. For example, Ahmadun. But only proper masculine nouns have a tanween. Proper feminine nouns only have a dhamma at the end. We'll talk about the gender in Arabic in a little bit. Definite article, Al. When Al is attached to a word, it means two things. The word is a noun, and the noun is definite. For example, al baytu, al kitabu. But notice how the tanween changed after adding the definite article. Baytun changed to al baytu. When adding al to a word, the un will have to change to dhamma, u. Some more examples. Exercise. Can you change these indefinite nouns to definite? Pause if you need more time. Adjectives. Most adjectives by default also end with a tanween. For example, thaqilun, khafifun, qaribun, jamilun, sari'un, harun, 
Sahlun. But Tanween on adjectives doesn't mean indefinite state, since a heavy or a light doesn't make any sense. But not all adjectives end with a Tanween. Adjectives that end with an have no Tanween. For example, Atshanu, Kaslanu, Farhanu. An adjective describes a noun. In Arabic, when you're using an adjective with a noun, the adjective must agree with the noun in definiteness, number, gender, and case. Look at this example. The beautiful house. Al-Baytul Jamilu. The literal meaning is the house, the beautiful. Both the noun and adjective are in the same state, which is definite state. Look at the next example. A beautiful house. Baytun Jamilun. Both the noun and adjective are also in the same state, indefinite. Another example, the big mountain. Al Jabalul Kabiru. A big mountain. Jabalun Kabirun. These examples are only showing the noun and adjective agreeing on definiteness. But remember, the noun and the adjective must agree on the number, gender, case, and definiteness. Is in Arabic. In Arabic language, there is no equivalent word for is. Al Baytu Kabirun. The house is big. Al Baytu means the house. Kabirun means big. Notice how the adjective is in its default state and not following the noun. So Al Baytu Al Kabiru means the big house. Al Baytu Kabirun means the house is big. Some more examples. Gender. In Arabic language, every noun is either masculine or feminine. A good way to learn about the gender of the words in Arabic is being able to recognize the feminine words first. Certain obvious nouns that are related to women are feminine. Words like mother, girl, or female names like Maryam. The ta marbuta. This is probably the easiest and most convenient way to recognize feminine words. The vast majority of the feminine words are recognized by the ta marbuta. Examples The plural of ta marbuta is at We will talk about the singular and plural in Arabic in more detail soon So at at the end of a word indicates that this word is feminine For example Exercise Can you spot the feminine words below? You can pause the video if you need more time Some professions can be turned into feminine by simply adding the ta' marbuta to them. Adjectives can also be easily made into feminine by adding the ta' marbuta to the end of them. For example, why it's important to know the gender of the nouns. Very shortly, we will explain one or two examples why knowing the right gender of the noun is so important in Arabic language. We learned that when using adjectives, if the noun is feminine, then the adjective should also be feminine. Take a look at the following examples. A new car, a new house. In here, the car is feminine and the house is masculine. We know the car is feminine because it has a ta' marbuta at the end of the word. We use the adjective new for both examples. But the adjective new also has masculine and feminine. So a new car, we use the feminine form. A new house, we use the masculine form. It's easy to know that the car is feminine word because it has the ta marbuta attached to it. But look at the following example. The sun is far, the moon is far. Although sun does not have a ta marbuta at the end of it, sun is feminine and the moon is masculine. And to use the correct adjective gender, you must know the noun gender. Hadihi means this for feminine. Hada means this for masculine. So when we say this is a car, we have to use هذه since the car is feminine. Another example, this is a house. We have to use the masculine هذا since the noun house is masculine. Singular plural. In English language, some nouns can be made plural by adding s 
ES or IES. For example, car, cars, teacher, teachers, box, boxes, baby, babies. These are regular or in Arabic sound nouns that follow a rule or a pattern. There are also some nouns that are irregular like man, men, mouse, mice, child, children. In Arabic language, there are also sound or regular plurals and broken irregular plurals. The sound or regular plurals. By simply adding un at the end of a sound masculine noun, we can make it plural. For example, muhandis, muhandisun, muallim, muallimun. Similar to the previous one, by simply adding at at the end of a feminine word and removing the ta marbuta, we will get a sound plural feminine noun. For example, muhandisa, muhandisat, muallima, muallimat. The broken or irregular plurals. The irregular plurals in Arabic have many different patterns. So it's recommended that while learning a new word, try to learn both the singular and the plural form for that word. Some examples walad, awlad, sarir, surur, kitab, kutub, qit, qitat. Arabic grammatical cases. There are three cases in Arabic language and these cases indicate the word's position and function in a sentence. The three cases are nominative case, al-marfu', accusative case, al-mansub', genitive case, al-majrur. Since this is a quick introduction video, we will not talk about the cases in this video. Instead, we will shortly talk about the genitive case and see how a word's case can be changed based on its position in a sentence. Preposition plus noun. We learned how to add definite article to nouns, and we also learned that after adding the definite article, the tanween will change. Baytun, a house, became al baytu, the house. Both words are still in nominative case, but we just saw how the tanween changed to dhamma. But when we add a preposition before a noun, the nominative case will change to genitive case. For example, Al Baytu, the house. When we say in the house, when we use a preposition fi, the Al Baytu will change to fil bayti. Notice how the Dhamma changed to a kasra. Another example Al Madrasatu, the school. To the school, il al madrasati. As you can see, the word changed its state from the nominative case to the genitive case. Pronouns, subject pronouns. These are the subject pronouns in Arabic. The list of the subject pronoun is too big to cover in one video, so for now we will only talk about the singular subject pronouns. Ana, anta, anti, huwa, hiya. Some examples. Ana muallimun, anta muallimun, anti muallimatun, huwa muallimun, hiya muallimatun. أنا سعيد أنت سعيد أنت سعيدة هو سعيد هي سعيدة These are the object possessive pronouns in Arabic. كتابي كتابك كتابك Kitabuhu, Kitabuha. Verb tenses, past tense, al -Maldi. In Arabic, there are no infinitive verbs. Instead, the masculine third person form is used. For example, when you say kataba, to write, it actually means he wrote. So verbs in infinitive form are actually in masculine third person form. Examples Darasa Fataha Amala 
Again, we will only focus on the singular form. For the sake of simplicity and making this video short, we will still focus on the singular conjugation. Katabtu, katabta, katabti, kataba, katabat. Notice how by only adding one suffix, we get all the singular past tense conjugations. Another example. Akaltu, akalta, akalti, akala, akalat. Present tense, al -mudari. In present tense, the suffix is added at the front and at the end of the verb. Example, kataba, aktubu, taktubu, taktubina, yaktubu, taktubu. Just like the past tense, we will focus on the singular conjugation. Notice how there are five pronouns and only four changes, since second and fifth are the same. More examples. Adrusu, tadrusu, tadrusina, yadrusu, tadrusu. Future tense, al mustaqbal. The future tense in Arabic is almost the same as the present tense. The only difference is adding s or sofa in front of the verb. For example, aktubu means I write, sa aktubu, I will write, sofa aktubu, I will write. Arabic verb roots. Just like other Semitic languages, most of the Arabic words are derived from a three-letter root. Arabic verb roots can have two, three, four letters. But almost 90% of the used verbs are three-letter roots. And that's what we will focus on. For example, the three-root word كتب that means generally anything related to writing or books. Notice how many words can be derived all from the main root. Maktab, katib, kitab, maktaba, kataba, and a lot more. This is why learning Arabic roots is so important. Only by learning one, three, or four letter root, you will get a dozen or more words all derived from that main root. It's a good idea to imagine that a word root is a tree seed, and from that seed, many different branches will grow, but they are still all part of the same tree and can easily be recognized. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe to our Glossika channel to see more videos like this. Also, please tell us in the comment section what language do you want to see next.